guys, welcome back to another Dunk Reviews. In this video, it's all about the new release from Stone Sour. Yes guys, if you remember the, I think it was the end of last year, I did a video where I counted down from 10 to 1 of the most anticipated rock and metal albums coming out in 2017. And I put this album, Stone Sour's new album, at number 1 of the most anticipated album of 2017. So yes, Stone Sour have released Hydrograd, their sixth studio album, and it came out today on the 30th of June. Now Stone Sour teased us again as all the, the bands have been doing this year with a few singles and it showed hope for the album. So let's see if it has justified my number one most anticipated album of 2017. Now the first thing that I can say about Hydrograd, and try to sum up, try to sum the sound of it, it's vintage new metal for the 21st century. Now what I mean by that, it's vintage as in, not what I've meant in other stages that it's like very first Stone Sour. What I mean vintage is the, the sound that they've managed to get in each song, um, from the guitar distortion to the solos to even the way Corey Taylor sings it. It's vintage new metal. It's even, sometimes it can be even more earlier metal. Uh, for example, the um, personality song. To me, when you listen to the, the layout of the song, the way it breaks down, it's very like Metallica's Justice For All, you know, the sound, that crunchy distortion, it's very similar to that. And that vintage sound is on the other songs as well. As I say, it's almost like sort of Creed, Korn, all mixed in, all the new metal goodness of the sort of early 2000s, or the, the noughties. That's what Stone Sour have captured, that sound and you know, because it's such a powerful movement, the new metal changed rock and metal in that kind of genre. And Stone Sour have captured that song, that that sound, sorry, and brought it forward to the 21st century. Another thing I like about this album is its testament for less is more. And that, you know, it's not all these sounds just fighting each other out to, you know, it's a basic riff. A, bit, a good, good riff to carry the song at the beginning. And it breaks down for the verse and it's just, you know, the minimum that's needed. So it's the vocals, bass and a drum. And that's all that's needed. And then the guitars kick in again in the chorus. That less is more helps push the song further. One thing I will say about Hydrograd, it's a safe album. In that there's nothing no boundaries have been pushed. Um, I mean, that's not saying it's a bad thing. You know, it, it, it's a good new ma a new metal album. It's not pushed any boundaries. It's not going to go down as a history as an album that changed. You know, the direction of rock and metal. You know, hopefully it'll bring new metal back up to where it belongs, quite high up. Um, but as I say, it's a safe, safe album. One of the things I always love about Stone Sour um, is it allows Corey Taylor to really show off his vocal talents. I'm a huge, huge fan of Corey Taylor. You know, if a genie appearance is right, I'll give you one talent, one one wish. I would love to sound like Corey Taylor. He just is a perfect rock voice from just normal singing to a kind of a good growl to his full-on slipknot kind of growl. And that's what this Stone Sour album allows him to do. Uh, you know, it, it goes through all the, the ranges, you know, even there's a song St Mary, which is kind of country style acoustic. Um, and again, it just is so powerful and so everything he does is perfection. And that's what this album really shows is his true vocal range. What I think this album will bring to the rock and music community is, I think it's, it's Stone Sour, a band that kind of everybody likes. I've, I've never heard anybody apart from Chad Kroger maybe, say a bad word about Stone Sour. And I think this album's just going to further their reputation. This is an album that would look, wouldn't look look out of place in any kind of, whether you're just rock, whether you're just new metal, whether you're just you know heavy metal, this album will fit in perfectly to anybody's collection. One of the songs that I think will guarantee to get the mosh pit going, by far the heaviest song on the album, and I can't wait to see how it's delivered live as somebody stole my, my eyes it comes in with a killer intro guitar riff that's complemented perfectly by a fast drum beat and it just, you know, if that's on uh, 
try not to headbang challenge. That's an instant fail. You cannot headbang, not headbang to this song. It is good. And I cannot wait to see how it's performed live. So there we have it. That is Stone Sour's Hydrograd. And I think, maybe, I, I think it's justified still my number one most anticipated album of 27. It is, as I said, the big thing it's done is it's sprung new metal to me. It's, it's gave it a fresh injection it needed, you know, and it's done that by going back to the vintage days but adding in the stone sour energy, passion and professionalism to bring it up to the 21st century. Um, so, is it the best album of the year? So far, it's it probably on par for me, it's on par with Nickelback's album. Um, it's a great album and I hold it top spot with, with Nickelback. So I'd love to hear in the comments below because obviously Corey Tara and Chad Kroger have been going back and forth. In your opinion, what do you think is the better album? Stone Sours or Nickelbacks? I'd love to hear in the comments below. But as always, I like to finish these videos by doing my top five songs of the album. So here we go. Number five, I went for Whiplash Pants. Number four is song number three. As in the song called number three, not the third song in the album. Number three is Knievel Has Landed. Number two is the first single they brought out, Fabulous. And number one, it's the one, it's got an amazing name when you read it, but I think it reads Type A Personality. That's how I interpret it. Now, as I say, going back to the, my third choice, Knievel Has Landed, that was a song that for me was, I was talking about that vintage riff that carries all the way through the song. And number one that I've chosen, Type A Personality, that was the one that had the strong links for me for the Metallica's Injustice for All. The, the sound of the distortion, the way the song carries out, you know, the breakdown into the bridge, the heavy part at the end, um, with the, you know, the, the drumming and the guitars just building up, building up, building up. Um, so that was for me, Type A Personality is the number one for me. So there you have it guys. If you like this, please give a like and subscribe to my channel. I try to keep you up to date with everything rock and metal. So until next time, cheers.